Perfect. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Nushin, and today I'm going to be talking about CA1 uh, network modeling. Uh, Carol and I were trying to build a CA1 uh, network. Uh, but before I talk about um, the hippocampal CA1 network, um, I'd like to briefly uh, give you some background about my research. So my research was focused on a single CA1 neuron in the hippocampus, uh, specifically its axon. Uh, I built a CA1 neuron with a long myelinated axon uh, to study axon excitability. So the general question is how does axon normally respond to stimulus? And as the next step, we wanted to identify the ion channels responsible for axon excitability. Uh, so since the main focus of the research is excitability, uh, I will talk more about excitability. So what I mean by excitability is the spiking pattern. Um, Hodgkin in 1948 identified three classes of excitability for neurons. Uh, I should mention that uh, the class of excitability is determined by the most excitable region of a neuron, which is the axon initial segment. So uh, some neurons behave as um, integrators and they have class one excitability. Uh, so as we increase the stimulus intensity, they fire with higher frequency. Uh, class two excitable neurons can spike repetitively like class one, but they can't fire with low frequency. Uh, but class three excitable neurons cannot uh, spike repetitively, so they generate only a single spike regardless of the stimulus intensity. So different neurons have different functions in the nervous system, and therefore they have different classes of excitability. But even um, different regions of the same neuron have different functions. We know that soma and dendrites are where the neuron receives input. Uh, then we have axon initial segment, which is the site of a spike uh, generation, and then axon is to transmit spike. So the question is, uh, and it's been shown that SOMA has class one excitability and it behaves as integrators. So the question is, which class of excitability is better suited for the role of the axon, which is a spike transmission? So we investigated this question in our lab uh, with both experiments and simulations. Optogenetic approach was used in the experiments um, to assess axonal excitability and to compare it with soma excitability. Uh, the experiments were performed on hippocampal CA1 neurons, and that's why I've built a hippocampal CA1 neuron. Uh, the axon of my model includes um, axon hillock, axon initial segment, um, nodes, paranodes, juxtaparanodes, and internodes. And there are various types of voltage-gated ion channels in the model. Uh, some of the features of the model um, are that um, we have considered axonal excitability very carefully, and also the details of node and internal sections, and the model is capable of accurately reproducing different set of experimental data. Uh, and here is the take message of our research. You can see that in both experiments and simulations, if we inject current into the soma, or if we photostimulate the soma, uh, we get a repetitive spiking as we increase the stimulus intensity. Uh, but if we photostimulate the axon, we get only one single spike, regardless of the stimulus intensity, meaning that axon has class three excitability. So as the next step, we wanted to identify the ion channels responsible for axon class three excitability. And we discovered that axon has class three excitability because of KB1 channels. So in both uh, experiments and simulations, after blocking KB1 channels, axon starts to spike repetitively. So uh, with this model in hand, um, uh, I want to build uh, the hippocampal CA1 network. Um, so the hippocampus contains excitatory neurons, including CA1, CA3, and granule neurons in DG. And uh, there are a variety of interneurons in CA1 area, including um, basket cells, BS, uh, AA, OLM inhibitory interneurons. Uh, and as we all know, hippocampus main functions involve memory and learning. Um, during memory and learning, a synaptic plasticity occurs at synapses of a network of neurons. 
Uh, one type of synaptic plasticity is long-term potentiation or LTP, which is a process by which synaptic connections between neurons become stronger. So imagine that we have two neurons, neuron A sends projection uh, to neuron B. Uh, so initially you might have a small postsynaptic potential, but after you pair neuron A with neuron P B several times, then what you would observe is an increase in the size of the postsynaptic potential. Um, so it's been shown that uh, different oscillations are generated in the hippocampus. The main ones are theta, which is 4 to 10 hertz, and gamma, which is 30 to 100 hertz. I'm going to focus on theta oscillation, and then Carol is going to talk about gamma oscillation. Um, there are many studies uh, trying to understand how uh, theta oscillation is generated and the relationship between theta oscillation and memory and uh, recall. And in this paper, it's been shown that storage of new information occurs in half cycle of theta and the other half is about recalling information. Um, in this paper, uh, a CA1 network model was built um, to study the mechanisms underlying storage and recall. Uh, the model includes uh, CA1 neurons, different types of uh, inhibitory interneurons, and the input is from uh, entorhinal cortex, CA3, and septum. And, um, in the, and uh, they have shown that um, during the storage cycle of theta, a long-term potentiation occurs between CA3 and CA1 neurons. First, uh, EC input arrives at CA1, AA, and B interneurons, um, and it evokes the spikes in AA and B, which prevents the soma of CA1 neurons from firing. And if you look at here, you can see that CA1 neurons do not fire during the storage, whereas AA cell and basket cell um, do fire during a storage cycle. And then um, if the postsynaptic potential here um, reaches a certain threshold, then the synaptic weight between CA3 and CA1 neurons uh, gets updated, and then the updated synaptic weight is stored to be used in the next cycle, which is the recall cycle. Uh, during recall, um, AA and B uh, interneurons are inhibited, releasing uh, the soma of pyramidal cells. So you can see that CA1 neurons generate the spikes during recall cycles. So um, I tried uh, to use this network model. Uh, so this model is very complicated. It, it um, has a lot of details. I imported this network into the NetPine. And then um, I wanted to replace the default uh, CA1 neuron with the CA1 neuron that I've built to see if I can get similar results to what I just showed you. So I rewrote um, my um, CA1 model code um, as a template because it was not written as a template. And I also changed the number of cells. In the original model, there are 100 CA1 and 100 CA um, three um, neurons, uh, but because my CA1 model includes a lot of segments and it has a lot of details, um, if I wanted to use 100 cell, it would take a lot of time for the simulation to be run. So uh, in this figure, you can see how neurons are uh, connected. And since I reduced uh, the number of cells, uh, I had to modify the network parameters to see if I can get similar results. So after uh, adjustments to the network parameters, um, I was able to produce similar results to the paper. So you can see that um, uh, AA neur interneurons and basket interneurons uh, fire during a recall um, cycle, and the other ones uh, fire during a um, storage cycle. Um, and also I recorded local field potential from four different electrodes to see if I can get something um, similar to theta oscillation. You can see that the average is kind of similar to uh, theta oscillation. So moving forward, uh, as I mentioned, we discovered that axon has class um, three because of KB1 channels. 
So what they want to do as the next step is to reduce the density of uh, KV1 channels and investigate the effects of that on a storage and recall. Also, it's been shown that um, CA1 neurons send projections to sebiculum, and there are evidences that uh, there is back projection from sebiculum to uh, CA1 neurons, but its role on uh, storage and recall is not well understood, so I want to investigate that as well. Um, thank you, everyone, and um, Carol is going to talk about uh, gamma oscillation. 